Amen. Amen. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about the year of release. The year of release. This is what 2018 is going to be for us. It's going to be a year of release. Amen. Somebody say year of release. Year of release. And so then while we're talking about those things and talking about some things this morning, I want you to keep that uh, in mind. There are going to be some things that are going to be released in your spirit this morning if you would receive them. And there's going to be some things uh, that are going to be released in a much more dramatic way later this evening if you are here. <laughs> God has uh, something in store uh, for you. Amen. But in this time, if you could go to John chapter 11, I want you to see something in that chapter. God is speaking to us uh, from the chapter where his friend Lazarus is raised from the dead. And in that chapter, um, personally, when it comes to John, I believe that John chapter 11 is the most important chapter in John. And you're going to see why in just a little bit. But in John chapter 11, I want you to look in verse 1. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters went, uh, sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that uh, God's son may be glorified through it. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. I'm going to read that one more time because maybe you were as confused as I was. It says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So, therefore... Because of what he just said, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he ran to where they were immediately. He loved them so much that he stayed where he was two more days. He loved them so much that he stayed where he was two more days. Verse 14, if you have that, verse 14 says, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. But verse 15 says, and for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. I want you to go to now verse 23. Verse 23, the same chapter, it says, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again, him speaking to Martha. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Then Jesus says, I am the resurrection. She said, I know he's going to raise again in the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. And the life, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Hmm. Verse 44 says, the dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Somebody say, release him. Jesus said, release him. Look at somebody right now and say, I am persuaded that God can do anything 
I want you to look at somebody else right now and say, okay then, you're released. <laughs> you're released. Release him. Amen. Does anybody believe that the presence of God is already in the room? Well, then I want to tell you this, that 2018, God's declaring that 2018 is the year of uh, release, right? Release, we're talking about being set free from restraint. We're talking about the ability or allowing something to move freely, to act freely, to flow freely, being released. Everybody understand? So what God was, was, is wanting me to tell you, and we'll talk about this a little bit more tonight, is that God is going to release his anointing. He's going to release his gifts in you. He's going to release faith. He's going to release promises. There's going to be a release of his spirit. There's going to be a release of his presence in 2018 like we've never seen before. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. There's going to be a release of answer prayer. You'll go to your knees and pray and wake up with the thing you were praying for. It's going to be so quick. We, there were times when we were praying before, and it was seeming like it was taking years for it to come to pass. But what I'm telling you is that 2018 is a year of release. Anybody want to praise the Lord with me? It's a year of release. What I'm telling you is there's going to be an open heaven. And as you pray, the thing you're praying for is going to come down. This thing won't take years to realize. We're going to wake up with the faith that we were asking for. We're going to wake up with the wisdom that we've been praying God for. We're going to wake up with the thing, the idea, the vision that we've been waiting. I'm not talking to anybody right now. What I'm telling you is that 2018 is the year of release. Now, here's the thing that I'm going to tell you. I'm actually telling you this four months late. But God loved you enough to tell you late. I'll explain more in a little bit. Just stay with me. The Jewish calendar begins in September. We've been in the year of release for four months. This is why all those testimonies have been coming, where it seems like all the doors were opening all of a sudden. After September, I might not be talking to everybody. I don't know. But all of a sudden, these phone calls have been coming to you. God told you to tell, to, to text people and tell them that your pastor said you're going to get a blessing this week. And then people called you back and saying, hey, I got that blessing this week. Because we were already inside the year of release. <laughs> Look at somebody and just say, just receive it. Just receive it. Don't try to wrap your mind around this, right? Just enjoy this presence. Just enjoy what God is doing. The same way you would go to the beach and you would enjoy hearing the waves, smelling the salt air, and enjoying the sun. You don't have to understand the science behind how it works. Amen. Just sit on the beach and just enjoy. Amen. Nobody goes to the beach and try to figure it out. Amen? Amen. Amen. What I'm telling you is this, that this release is happening, but God wants us to be aware. There's also going to be a release from the enemy, an attack to come. But God said that he has already lifted up his standard against it. He's making you aware that the attack is going to come, but the standard has already been raised. Amen? All we got to do is get behind the banner. God is going to be Jehovah Nissi for us. Amen? So don't worry, just believe, just believe, amen? So what I want to let you know is this. In John chapter 11, it highlights what God is going to do in 2018 like no other chapter can right now. John 11, what it does, it, dis it displays the passion, the purpose of Jesus Christ before he's on the cross uh, at all, amen? Through the resurrection of Lazarus, we see what God is really doing. We see what God is really doing, what his purpose, what his plan uh, really is. God sent Jesus to the earth to bear witness of the truth. Sent him to the earth for the remission of sins through his blood. Amen? 
He sent him to restore, right, put us in right fellowship back with God. Everybody understand that? And so many intentions and reasons why he sent Jesus, all of those things were accomplished. But nevertheless, there is, there is one intention that God wants me to emphasize uh, this morning, and that is that Jesus has come to set the captive free. Anybody ready to be free this morning? Now, when we see, often when we see Lazarus, uh, uh, we see him as the one who is set free. That's how we see the scripture, that he is the one who is set free. What I want to let you know is that there is more than one person in this story who's going to be set free. Matter of fact, every person in the story is going to be set free. And there's going to be one more person who is not in the story, who is in the story, who is going to be set free. <laughs> who has ears to hear, let them hear. Somebody say, just believe. just believe. So now I'm going to put Jesus in an impossible situation. And I'm going to do it on purpose. And I want you to go with me in Jesus being in this impossible situation. But Jesus has a tendency <laughs> to uh, master impossible situations. Matter of fact, God loves an impossible situation. God wants, he's waiting for you to say the word impossible, because to him there is nothing that is impossible. So if you say that something is impossible, God says, oh, that might be able to get some glory out of that. Because nothing is impossible for me. How many people believe that God can do anything? How many people believe that there is nothing that is impossible for God? Well, in John 11, uh, uh, this notion is put to the test. Everybody ready? It's put to the test. At the beginning of the story, we find Jesus on the other side of the Jordan with his disciples when they receive a message that someone is sick. But not just someone. This is the one he loves. This is his good friend who is sick. Everybody understand? His uh, name is Lazarus. This is the one who is sick. Lazarus, whose name means the one whom God helps, is sick. How is this possible that he can have a name that says the one who, whom God helps, and this is the one who is also sick? Explain to me, God, if you got my back. How did I get sick? If you got my back, how did my uh, uh, child get sick? You got my back. How did my loved ones, oh, I know it's getting tight now. How did my loved ones get sick? You're supposed to help me. As a matter of fact, you put the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And he's supposed to be the paracletos, the one who is called alongside to help. How? Am I sick? How is this even uh, possible? As a matter of fact, I came down to the altar and I said that Jesus is Lord. My life is supposed to be easy now. Right? You're supposed to take all the obstacles away. You're supposed to take everything away and allow everything to become. You said your burden is light. You said this yoke would be easy. It doesn't feel easy right now. I'm not talking to anybody right now. So this person who is sick, what it says is that, 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 that even though this person is sick, Jesus says, nevertheless, the sickness is not unto death. It's not unto death. This person is not going to die, but they are sick. So then now, this is where I have a little bit of a of an issue because the Lord delayed two more days from leaving, but, but this is the person whom he loves. This is the person who is his friend, who is sick. Not only is this a person who is his friend, but this is, this is Mary's brother. This is Mary's brother who in the next chapter is going to uh, purchase perfume that is seriously costly, pour it on him, and then massage his feet with her hair, ladies. 
There were no Nikes back then. There were sandals and toes in the dust. Some of y'all won't go outside with your head uncovered in the rain. And get upset at your beautician for putting too much oil in your She pours the oil on Jesus on his toes where he has been wearing sandals and then massages it, massages it with her hair. Her hair. Let him who has the ear to hear. It's all her, right? Her Anybody getting this? I want to speak to your mind for a second. I don't know if I would do that with my hands. Thank you. I got somebody saved in here. She did this with her care because she loved him so much. She understood who he was, but he didn't come when she needed him. He wasn't there. She was the one who chose the good part. Amen? Amen. And then, not only did she pour this oil, but like this, this fragrance that fills the house, her worship also fills the house. All of this is on the inside of her. Jesus knows it's on the inside of her, but he does not come right away. Why? Why is this? Was it because of self-preservation uh, at that time? If Jesus would have come to, to Judah, uh, they were wanting to kill him in Judah. He was going to be stoned if he uh, came there. The disciples were concerned about whether or not Jesus was going to go uh, to Judah or Judea at the time because uh, uh, what happened is he could have been stoned and they could have been stoned with him. Everybody understand that? So the point I'm, I'm, I'm making is why didn't he go? Well, maybe it was because of that. Maybe it was because of uh, maybe their unbelief. Maybe he was afraid uh, or maybe he was concerned that they weren't going to believe what he was going to do. And maybe that's why he didn't uh, uh, show up. Maybe that's why he didn't go right away. Maybe, um, maybe he really didn't expect Lazarus to die. He said the sickness wasn't unto death. But in fact, Jesus says Lazarus is sleeping. And what he plans to do is go wake him up. Amen? Maybe it was that he didn't think he was going uh, to die. But here's what happens. Jesus expressly says it, that Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. And not only is Lazarus dead, but these are the people who I love. And because I love them, I'm going to wait two more days. Does that sound like love to you? Because if I need something, I need you to be here right now. If I need some help, I need you to help me now. If by the time that I have fixed my heart to ask for help, then I definitely need that help right now. Most of us don't even ask for help anyway. But by the time I open my mouth, God, I need you here. Not only do I need you here, but I need you to send some other people here too. Amen? The one who God, whom God helps is he suffers and then dies. Think about this for a second. What about Martha and Mary? While they were by their brother's bedside, how was that going? They had sent word to Jesus. They knew the word went to him. They knew the word came back from him that, yeah, he's not leaving yet. What kind of stress were they going through? While they were waiting on healing, Jesus 
is their friend. They know who he is. They weren't strangers. They weren't uh, any Joe Blow off the streets of Jerusalem. They know Jesus' middle name. You understand what I mean? They know his mother. They know who's not his father. <laughs> we could talk about Jesus' family or we could talk about yours. Which one you want to go with? <laughs> They know the intricate details. They're his very good friends. And Jesus isn't coming. It's getting bad now for Lazarus. He looks bad. And the whole time, Mary is keeping faith. Jesus is coming. Don't worry. Are they patting Lazarus' hand and saying, Jesus, is, he's, he's going to be here in just a little while. Just hold on, Lazarus. What is it like for Martha and Mary when, G when Lazarus dies? And he dies, and in those few moments, they're thinking Jesus is going to come straight through the door. He's, he's going to come in any, at any moment. He's, he's breathed his last breath, but I know Jesus is going to walk right through that door. And he's not there. What is it like for Martha and Mary as they go to funeral directors. And the reality that their brother is dead is settling in. And the other reality that Jesus didn't show up has settled in. Amen? Hmm. They bury their brother, and Jesus wasn't there. They laid him in a tomb, and Jesus wasn't there. A day goes by, and he's in the tomb. Jesus still has not shown up. They got to think Jesus must be dead. Think about this. Have you ever needed God so much? And you needed God to show up right now. And he didn't. And the next day he didn't. Did you think maybe there is no God? I don't know what it was for Martha and Mary. I'm speculating a lot here, but I can imagine they went through a lot of emotions. Amen? But I understand... Uh, I understand this. It wouldn't be long before Jesus would be suffering friendless. It wouldn't be long before his disciples would have scattered from him while he was buried. It wouldn't be long before he was laid in the tomb for the people whom he loved to not be around. But this isn't the end of the story. Somebody say, just believe. Somebody else say, you're released. So then now, why wait, Jesus? Why, why wait at all? And there's something phenomenal that happens in the, uh, the message Bible, in this version. I want you to hear this because this is where the Lord is trying to explain to you. This is what the release is about. In the message Bible, in verse 15, the Bible says it like this. I am glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. You, you're about to be given new grounds for believing. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Jesus is saying it like this. I'm giving you new grounds. I'm giving you new lands. I'm giving you new territory for believing. Now, somebody's got to catch that right there. Now, I see a lot of people, you're trying to dig into that, right? But he's saying that there's going to be new grounds for believing, new grounds for, for faith here, a new territory. Somebody say a new territory. A new territory. God wants to show you his glory. He wants to increase your faith. His gift then to us is an adverse situation. 
in the adverse situation, we, found, we find out something else about God. Amen? So when we ask God for strength, he gives your soul a workout. <laughs> when you ask God for patience, he gives you a frustrating situation. God, give me more patience. <laughs> we, God, we say, God, make me more righteous so he allows more temptation. <laughs> you ask for it. What I'm explaining to you is in order for God to take you to the next level, then he has to give you a little stress. There has to be something that comes to you to cause something to grow. Because without any resistance, how does anything grow? Amen? Amen? If it wasn't for uh, uh, Jesus, think about it like this. It's for you that he wasn't there. It's for you. Jesus would say it like this. It was for you that I wasn't there. It was for you. God loved you enough for him to be late. Let me, okay, let me explain it to you like this then. If, if, it hadn't, if I hadn't been sick, I wouldn't have understood that God is a healer. If I hadn't been bound, I wouldn't have understood that God was a deliverer. If I hadn't been lost, I wouldn't know that Jesus was a savior. I, if, if I hadn't been experiencing pain, I wouldn't have known that Jesus is a comforter. Anybody hear what I'm saying? What I'm telling you is that your faith is going to another level. You have new grounds now for believing. You have new lands for faith. There is a new territory for which you understand about God. Somebody say, just believe. Somebody else say, your miracle is almost here. But here's the thing. There is a bit of a problem. There is a problem here because Jesus has to overcome boundaries. He has to overcome limitations. He has to overcome barriers in order to get to where Lazarus is and bring him out of what he's in. <laughs> Martha says it like this to Jesus. If you were here then my brother who was sick would not have died if you were here. If you were here, this wouldn't have happened. You understand? If you were here, this wouldn't have happened. But, but then she says, but I know whatever you ask, God will, God will do. Amen? So then Jesus then says to her, well, look, your brother will rise. And she says, after she says, whatever you ask, I know God will do it for you. He says, okay, well, then your brother will rise again. She says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection. And then Jesus says, sis, I am the resurrection. Not only am I the resurrection, but I'm the life that sustains the resurrection. If there wasn't for me, there would be no life. If there wasn't for me, there would be no resurrection. Sis, I am the resurrection. I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection. I am. I am the resurrection. He puts it this way. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Verse 26 says, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? This is what he asked Martha. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? And her answer is yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everybody hearing this? He has to overcome some limitations in order to get to where Lazarus is. Mary then comes to him and says the same thing, but she does it with more emotion. She falls at his feet because, Jesus, I thought we understood each other. I gave you all that worship. Martha just served you, but I gave you my heart. I told you my deepest secrets. I, I confessed to you. I, I, I skinned up my knees for you. I, I, I defended you in front of other people. I did all these things for you, and I'm now falling at your feet. Jesus, if you had, if you had been here, my brother would be alive. I want you to feel Mary for a little bit. If you had been here, 
And one day she thought, why weren't you here? I thought you loved me. Am I talking to anybody right now? God, I thought you were, you were with me. I gave, I returned tithes. I sold offerings. I came to the services. Where were you? If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. The message says it like this in verse 17. While other people were becoming barriers, it says it like this. <laughs> well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? This is what other people said, more barriers. After all, he opened the eyes of a blind man. After all, he healed other people. He could have got here. What's wrong with Jesus? And then we begin to have issues. We put limitations. We begin to say, see, this is why I don't like pastors. See, this is, what I, this is my problem with the church, that right there. This is my issue with y'all church people. When you're needed, where are you? <laughs> but here's the situation. God loved them enough to be late. Somebody say, just believe. Your miracle was almost here. Just believe. What I'm explaining to you is that he had to be late to cause an impossible situation to be there, to give them new grounds for believing. If it wasn't for the situation that you were put in, then how would your faith increase? So then I thank God for all of the situations, the good ones and the bad ones, because through this, patience was being exercised. I was given a new faith because of this, this situation that I was put in. I didn't like the situation. I didn't like what I was going through, but God wanted to increase my faith so that he can do something different in me. So he gave me new grounds for believing by giving me a situation because he loves me so much. So the thing that I went through, I went through it because he loves me. He loves me. He loved me enough to let me go through this situation. It's kind of like this. You ever love your children so much that you let them ride that bike and they fell and they hurt themselves and you love them enough not to run out to them so they could learn strength? so they can learn how to manage pain, so they can learn that it's going to be all right and they could dust themselves off. There was a time when you had to help them and you would dust them off. But then they got a little older and you went to dust them off and they were like, okay. But then as they got a little older and they had some pain, you let them handle it. I'm, I'm going to be here if you need me. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm going to be over here, but by now you can handle this pain. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you get hurt. I'm not going to let, but, but you can handle this. Amen? By now, by now, all of what you've been through, all of what you've experienced and the things that you've seen by now, you can handle this. I'm not going to put anything on you that you can't bear, so says the Lord. Everybody hear what I'm saying? You can go through this situation because in you is the strength to bear it. And when you come out on the other side, you'll be that much stronger, ready, willing, and able for the work of the ministry. Everybody hear what I'm saying? He loves you enough. There was times when my children were two and three and they would play and then they would fall. And then uh, Pastor Kendra would go, she would make a little motherly noise and go running and I will hold her back and I'm like wait 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 I wonder how many times God did that how many times did he hold back mercy wait wait let's see the strength in my daughter first 
I want to see the strength in my son. Will he get up and dust himself off and realize it's okay? Wait, mercy. I know how you feel because I designed you to be that way. Wait a second. You stand up and you realize I'm going to be all right. And then you can tell somebody else, hey, look, you'll be all right. I've been through the same thing you were going through. There's another side on the other side of this. You're going to be all right. Just trust God. Anybody hear what I'm saying? He loved them enough to be late. But now here's Jesus at the tomb, and the stone is in the way, another hindrance. And there's, and when he says, take away the stone, they're saying, no, 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 don't do that. There is a stench there, another barrier, another limitation. Anybody hearing this? But in verse 43, uh, Jesus then yells. He says, Lazarus, come forth. He yells to him. He yells to Lazarus. Why does he yell? Why couldn't he whisper? Why didn't he just say Lazarus? I mean, of course, I think that God would hear him. Why does he yell to Lazarus? Amen? What we understand is that before this, he says something like this, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. What I'm saying is that Jesus was already in himself praying for the situation before Lazarus was dead. He got the message that he was sick and already sent up the prayer. Everything is already happening because prayer can come across distance. Oh, you could pray for people in Vietnam right now and not be in Vietnam. You can pray for people in the hospital right now and not be in the hospital. You can send the word and they will be healed. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And so what happens, thank you, Father, that you have heard me. But I'm saying this so these other people can hear, so that you can increase their faith for what's about to happen. Lazarus, come forth. Why does he yell this way? It's because Lazarus is a far way off. He's distance. He's a, at a distance away. Lazarus isn't in the tomb. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he has to yell out into the atmosphere, Lazarus, hear me. Get back in this body. My friend, you were once a far way off. <laughs> and Jesus shouted your name before the Father and the throne. Shouted your name because of the distance that sin put between you and him. So he said, Fred, come forward. Tina, come forward. Callie, hear me. Come forth. Anybody hear what I'm saying? You were a far distance from God, but God wanted you with him, so he sent Jesus to yell your name. Come forward. You're a mighty long way away from him, but his words can reach places. that would seem impossible. Mm. So what happens is Lazarus is now alive. And while he is alive, he is coming out of the tomb. But there is a problem. He's alive, but he's bound. He's living but he's wrapped up. He can breathe, but he can't see. His heart is beating, but he can't feel. <laughs> he 
can think, but he doesn't know where he is. So Jesus said, take the grave clothes off of him. The grave clothes representing that old man, get it off of him. Get that old sin nature off of him. Get the, the face cloth that's over his face. Get that kerchief off of his face because he's got to be able to see me. If he can see me, then he will be conformed into the same image as long as he can see me. Take off the face cloth so he can see me face to face because the more I see you, Lord, the more I'm like you. The more I can see your eyes, the more I understand my eyes. The more I understand your heart, the more I understand my heart. God, let me see you. So he says to them, loose him and let him go. Somebody say, loose him. Somebody say, release him. Release him and let him go. Release him. Release him. Oh, my God. What I'm explaining to you is that you're released. You're released into your destiny. You're released into your purpose. You're released into God's plan. You're released into his yes, into his amen. You're released into your future. You're released into the plan that God has for you. He has not forgotten about you. He hasn't put you to the side. He's been waiting for this time to release you into who it is that you're supposed to be for him. Is anybody ready to receive that right now? Look at somebody and say, you're released. You're released. You're released. You're released. The song puts it this way. No limits. No boundaries. I see increase all around me. <laughs> no limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. The face cloth is gone. I can see. I can. Can anybody see right now? No limits, no boundaries. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Stretch for, break for, release me, enlarge. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just lift your hand real quick. Thank you, Jesus. I need you to hear this because I told you that Lazarus wasn't the only one who was set free. There's no more barriers now for Lazarus. There's no more boundaries for him. There's no more limitations for him. What is impossible to Lazarus now? But there's still something else. Lazarus was not the only person released. Martha was released. Mary was released. The people were released. The disciples were released. Jesus was also released. Death was no longer an adversary now. He had already conquered death before he went to the cross. Lazarus was practice for what was getting ready to come. He saw himself and Lazarus coming out of that tomb.
what God does in you is what he's doing for himself. So he released him so he could be released. What I'm explaining to you is like this. Death was conquered in those words. God was released. There were no more limits for him now. God can do anything. So then now, when I hear that song, I hear it differently. I, before, when I heard that song, I sang that to God. No limits, no boundaries. Release me, Lord. Enlarge my territory. Do this for me, God. But now, having this understanding, I see that song differently. God is singing to us. No limits, yeah. no boundaries. He's singing to us. I see increase all around me. No limits, God is saying. No boundaries, God is saying. I see increase all around me. Take the limitations off. There's increase all around me. Take the boundaries away. There's there's, in, I can see it all around me. So what I want you to do is this. Stretch more. Break more. Release me, God is saying. Release. Release me. Release me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord right now. the thing while God is singing to you no limits you're singing back to him no limits you're being released God's being released there's a relationship that's happening here where both parties are being loosed and let go anybody hear what I'm saying so then now God says to you to this he says this to you enlarge my territory I'm giving you new grounds for believing, new lands for faith. Yes, Lord. I'm giving you new territory for trusting me. So what I want you to do is enlarge my territory in you. Give me more of you. Let me in different places that you would not. Enlarge my territory in you. Give me your heart and your mind. Give me your spirit and your soul. Give me all the things that pertain to you. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Thank you, Jesus. Is anybody hearing what God is saying? Somebody say, just believe. Just believe. Somebody else say, you're released. You're released. We're a worship church. God has declared 2018 to be the year of release. When you heard this, you heard about you receiving from God. <laughs> but it's our year to release him to do the impossible, to do what he does best. And even if he's late, to show up and be God for us. Anybody ready for 2018? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, here's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand this, that God is going to release his anointing. He's going to release his presence. He's going to release his gifting in you. He's going to do miraculous things in you, but you got to release him to do it. Release him to use your mouth. Release him to use your hand. Release him to use your faith. Release him as he releases you. Anybody hearing this? Tonight, I'm telling you this. You don't want to miss because what happened in the spirit here is going to happen for us 
in the natural here. God is going to release your gift. He's going to release his anointing in you. Amen. He's going to release himself in you. He's going to release his presence in you. I want you to come with your with, with that sickness that you want healed. Come being prepared to stand in proxy for somebody else that needs healing. Come ready to be delivered from some things. Amen. Come with an honest spirit knowing that you want to be delivered. God is going to move tonight. He's going to move tonight. He's going to move in the worship. He's going to move in ministry. Anybody hearing this? God is going to activate some things in you tonight. There's going to be a prophetic that's going to come out of you that you didn't even know was there. Amen. There's going to be a healing anointing that's going to be released in you that you didn't even know was there. If you were just enough, you have enough faith just to come tonight, God is going to move all over you. Is anybody ready for that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, here's what I want you to do. If you believe that's going to happen, I want you to lift your hands right now. If you believe that's going to happen, I want you to stand to your feet right now. And what I want you to do is give God a great big hallelujah. Give him a great big thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him, thank him for 2017. But praise him for 2018 right now. Release your praise. 